Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about drop shadows in Canvas. And this is a fantastic way to embellish your content by really making it pop on the screen. So it increases your aesthetic impact in your courses. Now, when you upload an image to Canvas, by default, it just puts your picture on a white background with no drop shadow. Adding a drop shadow can really make your image pop. You can have a simple drop shadow or you can have it offset slightly. And when you start working in the code, you're going to specify the, the various properties of your drop shadow. How far to the right and down do you want your shadow? Or do you want it to the left and up or centered? Also, how deep do you want your shadow? And would you prefer that shadow to be blurred slightly? Which I think is always a good practice. So as you create your shadows, the element is called box shadow. And there are six different properties that you can apply to your shadow. There's a specific order in which you apply the properties. Now, inset refers to a drop shadow being inside an element or a picture as opposed to outside of it or appearing to be underneath it or behind it. I personally haven't really used inset in Canvas, but horizontal and vertical offset, those are the two required properties when you define your box shadow. You have to tell the browser how far to the right, left, or center do you want your shadow as well as up and down. The other three are optional, but also very useful. I think the blur radius is a very important property because you don't want your shadow to just appear like a box behind your image. You want it to have a little bit of, of depth to it, a little bit of blur. And to really apply depth, you would put a term for spread distance, and that's up to you as well as color. So what the code looks like as you're typing it out is you'll have box code. The first element here is that I have a horizontal offset of five pixels, meaning the shadow is going to appear five pixels to the right of my element. If that was negative five pixels, then it would appear a little bit to the left of my picture or my element. Next, I define a vertical offset. In this case, I chose five pixels. So it's not only going to hang to the right five inches, but it's also going to go down below the image five inches. The blur radius, I chose 10 pixels, and that's pretty typical. Spread distance is optional. You can have it zero so that it's close to the image, or you can have a little bit of depth. So I chose five pixels. And I chose the color gray. Now, by default, if you don't choose a color, it's going to be gray anyway, unless you have an element like a div that is colored. In that case, the shadow by default will adopt the color that you use for that, unless you specify a different color. So again, the blur radius, the spread distance, the color are optional. So here's what the actual code would read in the browser. And this is what that would look like. My image has a drop shadow and it's slightly offset, just a little bit to the right and a little bit down. So it's an offset drop shadow. Now let's play around with a few options so that we can really understand those properties. So the first shadow that I'm going to create is a very simple drop shadow. I'm going to have it centered. So from left to right, it's going to be centered as well as up to down. Now, if it's centered like that, you don't need to put pixels, but if there's any value at all, then you want to put pixels. You can also put use percentages or EM. I, I like pixels. And so I have that centered, and I'm just going to put a blur radius of 10 pixels. And then you can see the effect to the right. So left, right, up, down, the shadow is about equal, and it has a blur of 10. Now, if I were to go back here and change that to 20, for example, then you can see that it's a, big, a bigger blur. So I'm going to keep that at 10 for now. Now let's duplicate that, um, but let's give it a little bit of offset. So instead of zero, I'm going to put that to the right by five pixels, and I'm going to put it down five pixels. And you'll notice before I put a blur, it's just a very solid, it's the exact replica of the image or the shape. And I don't really like that. Maybe you do, but I'm going to put a blur of 10 pixels again. So the first shadow and the second shadow are exactly the same, except for a slightly offset. One is five pixels to the right and down. Now, if I were to change this to maybe negative five, then you can see that it goes to the left. If I were to put negative five, then for the second value, then you can see it go up that way. If I were to put negative 15, you can see that it really spreads out that way. I'm going to go ahead and keep them at five, just slightly offset. Now let's play around with a spread. So I'm going to replicate that first one. I'm going to have zero, zero, 10 pixels. So it's a simple drop shadow. And then I'm going to give it a depth of five pixels. I can see how that really pops right there. Now let's go ahead and type in some more code. I'm going to give it an offset of five pixels, just like the second one. So you can see the difference between not having any depth and having five pixels of depth. And the depth really impacts the shadow. If I were to change that to 10 pixels, you can see how extreme that is. And maybe I'll make it a simple drop shadow. 
And so you can see the difference that 10 pixels of depth makes. In my experience, I think 10 pixels is probably too much. Five pixels even, I think that would be good. An interesting thing about the depth is you can actually have negative pixels as well. If I were to put that as at negative three, it actually brings the shadows in as opposed to the drop shadow right there. If I were to bring it in negative five pixels, then you can see the difference. And it's almost, it's very subtle. You can barely even notice it. Now let's play around with maybe making a shadow on only one border instead of two borders like this drop shadow. So in this case, I'm going to center the shadow and I'm going to put it maybe eight pixels down. And so you can see the effect that that has, has it brings it right down. I'm going to blur it maybe six pixels. And then like I was saying, you can put negative values for the distance and I'm going to put maybe negative seven pixels. And now you can see there's no shadow left, right, up, but there's a drop shadow at the bottom. And this was actually a very popular effect circa 2009 or so, and I still think it's pretty sleek, and you might find an application for that. So now let's play around with a color. I'm going to make an offset uh, with a, a big blur. Let's put that as a 30 blur. And I'm going to give it a spread of maybe five pixels, and now let's add some color. Let's make this fun and put maybe red. So that's pretty cool. And an interesting feature with the box shadow element is that you can combine shadows too. So let's keep going. Let's make another shadow. And this time I'm going to make it negative five pixels. So it'll be to the left five pixels. It's gonna be up five pixels. I'm going to, again, spread it 30 pixels. Let's give it a depth of five pixels and let's make this one blue. And look at that. It's probably not a shadow that you're going to use a whole lot in your canvas course, but it is kind of fun to just know that that exists. And you can add as many shadows as you want. You can layer them. I could put yellow in there, change the properties, and have fun. Let's dial this back just a moment, just so I can show some of the other color options. So if I were to type in dark cyan, for example, then I get that color. Maybe dark slate gray. You gotta spell it correctly. Here's fire brick and light sea green. Maybe some maroon and sienna or even steel blue. You can type out HTML color names or you can use hex codes or RGB. Whichever you're more familiar with would be fine. Now, one thing that's disappointing about the drop shadow property is that you can't use it inline in Canvas. So for here, I have a Canvas page and let's go into my code and you can see my source. So the box is CSS, so I would write in style and I would put in my code. In this case, let's put in that really fun red and blue code. When I go to preview, I can see that. Let's just bump that out a, real quick. I'm going to, since that's a pretty big one, I'm going to put a div. And let's just give that a little bit of a margin. So here I can see inline the effect that it has on my picture, but when I save it, then Canvas is gonna scrub it. So unfortunately, I'm back to the regular image, which means that you're going to have to upload your drop shadow settings into your internal CSS. If you're a Canvas admin, then you can go into your theme editor and either download your CSS file if you already have one, or you can create a CSS file and upload it. If you download it, you just add the shadow properties to the file. And if you're not a Canvas admin, then you'll have to reach out to somebody at your institution who is a Canvas admin and who would have access to that theme editor. There's a resource on the Canvas guides in the admin guide section on how exactly do you upload custom JavaScript and CSS. So you just follow these steps in order to do that at your institution. You can also upload the CSS to sub accounts if you have a sub account theme. In your CSS file, you'll create classes. You can also create IDs for each of your shadows with the properties. And once you either update your existing CSS or create a new CSS file and upload that into Canvas, then you just want to make note of the class names because that's what you'll use on your actual Canvas page. So here on my edit screen, I can see that I have four pictures of baby pandas and I want to add different shadows to those based on the CSS that I created and uploaded into our instance. What I'm going to do is hop over to the HTML editor and this is a little bit sloppy, but I can see my various images. Let me just take a quick moment and isolate these just for the sake of clarity. 
So here are my images, and I want to create shadows based on the classes I created in my CSS. So I'm going to write class equals, and then the first shadow is called shadow one, and I'm not very creative. Maybe you're going to be more creative than I am in naming your classes. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that to my other images. So those all have the same shadow, and I'm going to change it to class two, class three, and class four. And now I'll go ahead and hit save and see the effect. So now I can see the first image has a very simple drop shadow, which personally, that's the effect that I like the best. And that's the drop shadow that I use most frequently. The second one has a simple drop shadow with an offset of five pixels, five pixels to the right, five pixels down. That's also a very nice and clean effect. And it really makes the image pop off the screen. The third one is a drop shadow with a depth of five. And then the fourth one is that simple shadow that we did where there's just a, one shadow at the very bottom, no shadows to the right top or the left. They are all very interesting effects. I think let's go ahead and edit this page. And just for fun, I'm going to copy this last image and put it down there. And I'm going to give it a class of shadow five. I know that's a pretty big shadow, so I'm going to create another div. And I'm going to make that div maybe a hundred pixels. It's a fun thing. I like just knowing that I can do that, that it's possible. The last thing I want to show you is that these drop shadows don't just apply to pictures. They can apply to other elements. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in an element that is a header. So this is, this is a heading. And we talked about this in one of our other tutorials about how to create this heading. And I'm going to add a class to this. I have some classes already and I'm just going to put a space and I'm going to put maybe shadow two or even shadow three. I think that would be more dramatic to demonstrate it. So let's go ahead and save that. And now you can see my heading and it has the same shadow as this third picture right there. And maybe I don't like that heading for that. So I'm going to go ahead and try uh, perhaps shadow four. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a little bit more subtle. That actually looks really nice as a heading. So if you have a div that stretches the, the entire width, I think it actually looks better than on the small picture because here it kind of gets hidden, but up here with a div that's so big, then you can really see it. And so once you have your drop shadows created, defined and stored away in classes, you can apply them to various elements on your canvas page. If you like this tip, then I definitely recommend that you subscribe to the channel and get notified whenever new content comes out. I have a big long list of things that I want to share with everybody. And you can also visit our supplementary website, howtocanvas.com and follow us on social media for tips and tricks. I want to thank you for joining me and I definitely appreciate it. And I want to tell each of you happy teaching and learning.